Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today it is time to start fixing up some of these broken trim bits. Hey guys, today we're doing something completely different we've never done before. We've actually got a giveaway uh, competition for you, and it is... We got approached by uh, Yode Watches, and they make these really funky wooden watches. Uh, this one's uh, completely mechanical from their Dover range. It's actually zebra wood and dark sandalwood. Mm, and I have got one from their Cassia range, and it is the olive wood with the Aegean blue face, which I think is very elegant. So All you have to do is click the link in the description, and one of you can win a watch from their Frankie range, uh, or you can use that uh, value towards something else in the collection. Uh, it includes free sizing and free shipping worldwide. Uh, and there's also a promo code, home built by Jeff, in uh, checkout and you can get $25 off anything in their range. The competition closes on the 26th of November, so get in quick. So good luck. One of you are gonna win. Okay, so for those of you who've been following along, you will have seen that uh, I pulled out all of these uh, trim pieces I've got for my uh, Z and most of them are all busted and broken. It's really, really thin, flimsy plastic. It's the sort of the thinnest stuff, uh, interior trim I've ever seen. Uh, obviously, you know, it's uh, lightweight, which is which is great for race stuff, but it's not great for longevity and uh, particularly when it's really brittle plastic like this. So what I think I'm gonna try and do today is um, I'm gonna try and repair these and I'm, the way I'm thinking I'm gonna do it is with fiberglass. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna try and rough the back up and fiberglass to them so that they are back into one piece just so that they are good and strong and then I think I'm gonna to need to trim them because uh, I won't be able to replicate the sort of the, the vinyl look finish they have on here. Um, like once I start sanding it and, and messing around with it, it's going to ruin that finish and it won't be even and I want this to look just nice. So trimming will be the go, I think. So before I can do that anyway, uh, let's try and get a plan attack together and see if I can rough the back up and start fiberglassing these things together. All right, so I've gone through now, I've uh, given these a quick clean on the back and that is where I'm gonna put the fiberglass. I want the fiberglass behind and I want a nice, neat surface on the front. Now, some of these bits like this piece here is missing a big chunk and my plan is to, to be able to rebuild this is I'm going to, I thought about just taping on the front of it, but the tape's gonna be too soft so it's not gonna necessarily hold the exact right shape I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some cardboard, I've got some nice uh, sort of glossy cardboard here, um, and make the shape out of the cardboard and tape uh, together to uh, try and get the exact right shape I want. And uh, hopefully that will sort of make sort of the mold by taping it on the front that I can fiberglass from behind and that will tie it all together. That's my plan in any case, so we'll see how it goes. But um, time to start making up some molds and getting these things the way I want them. All right, so I've gone around all of these pieces and I've I cut out bits of cardboard and then I sort of taped them all up on the back and got everything sort of pretty much where I want it so that I've got all of the, the cracks and stuff taped up, ready to go. So now it's time to put down some paper so that I don't get fiberglass everywhere because fiberglass is horrible stuff. Um, and um, lay it all down, cut out all my strips of fiberglass, have everything ready to go so that I can just do a mix and get into it. I, uh, I really hate using the stuff, but uh, it's perfect for this purpose, I think. 
as long as it sticks well to this plastic, I hope it does, but uh, I've done the best I can. I've cleaned it all up well with acetone. All right, let's mix it up. All right, I've got everything laid out, ready to go. I've got my fiberglass, I've got a mixing cup, I've got uh, just an old paintbrush that I'm gonna be uh, uh, using to lay it all in. Everything is ready, I think. So it's time now to start actually doing the first mix. Let's start making fiberglass. I really hate this stuff, it's horrible, but uh, it does the job. All right, all these bits are done for now. So now it's time, I'm gonna go and have some lunch and hopefully when I come back, this is the stuff is uh, setting up and fingers crossed it all works the way I hope it will. All right, I've had these things sitting out in the sun to set up and uh, they're, they're getting there. A good tip with fiberglass is if you can catch it in time, um, it's worth trying to trim it while it's still just sort of going off it's much, much easier than having to cut it later because later you have to do it with a grinder and it's messy and it's horrible. But here, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not fully hard, but it's uh, hard enough that I can just run it around the edge with a razor blade and it's gonna save me a lot of mess and itchiness later. Okay, I've trimmed up all those bits. I've left them out in the sun so that they can set up completely. Um, I have one piece, actually there's a couple of pieces that, uh, that aren't damaged at all. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna have a go at trimming this piece first and uh, just see how it goes. But um, before I do that, I just need to make a final fit in the car, make sure it still fits because uh, some of these things are slightly altered because I welded in the panels for the roll cage. So, there are slight discrepancies, so I'll make sure it fits and then I'll come out and I'll see how we go gluing on some of this uh, Alcantara. All right, that was a bit of playing around to get this to go around these complex curves because it's quite, um, because of the different angles, trying to get it so it's nice and flat and straight. And the bulk of the panel is pretty good. It's just this little corner here. Um, if you can see that there is a little buckled and I had to cut a split in this corner here. And there's a, I put another piece in behind it, but um, that is actually hidden on the tower. This sits, uh, the tower sits there, so it does hide it, but, uh, that's the only way I could get it to go around all of those bits with one piece. But uh, I'm really happy with that because I was these were the pieces I was worried about the most because this is the most complicated shape I've got. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just worried about the amount of stretch in the Alcantara, but this looks great. Um, from crusty, broken, snap, mismatched bits and pieces to a nice finished, you know, Alcantara look. I'm happy. Okay, so one panel down. Let's uh, have a look at those other bits, see how the fiberglass is set up and see if we can um, do some bogging and sanding. Yes, you know it.
Okay, I've done my round of bogging on those uh, parts to try and sort of smooth them all out. Uh, now I've got this rear panel. This actually sort of sits uh, sort of inside uh, blocking in the tail lights. So I'm gonna now go through, clean this up and see if I can trim this one and see this, how this one looks. At least this is in good nick and doesn't need any repairs. All right, I have this rear panel trimmed. The thing is, is the panel looks pretty good. I'm reasonably happy. There's a couple of little pucker bits. It's not perfect, but mostly around the edges where it tucks in around the body anyway. I'm not, not too concerned. That looks pretty good. These bits look like junk. You can see the, uh, all the creases all the way around the edge. They look terrible. I think what I'm going to have to do, because the material doesn't really stretch, um, oh, well, it doesn't stretch that much. I've tried stretching as hard as I can over the top of the, uh, the panel, and then um, the trouble is, is as it gets over the edges, it bunches together, and trying to get it to, to sit flat while it's sort of bunching together, it just, it just doesn't work. I think the best thing for these is probably going to be to take the cover off and to paint them again. They're still in good condition, so I can paint them black. They'll just look like black vinyl. Um, it would be good to have them the same as the back panel, and but beggars can't be choosers. I want it to look as good as I can, but I don't want to. Um, yeah, that 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 is not good enough. So, anyway, let's get on and keep sanding the rest of those bits. I've gone through on these. Now, it's just a really rough repair. They don't have to be super perfect because uh, they're getting trimmed over, just enough so that you can feel it and it feels flat because the trim will cover scratches, but it won't cover divots. So that's all I was trying to get with that. So these are all looking much better. So now it's time to clean them up and see if I can stick some trim on these as well. That's an easy one. It uh, looks great because it's simple and flat. Um, a lot of you were also asking me what glue I was using. I actually, this is not a sponsor. I, you know, just, uh, I got this stuff off of the uh, motor trimmer friend of mine and even he's used lots of stuff. I've used 3M stuff, I've used other things. This stuff is amazing. Uh, I don't know where you get it. I, th I think it's Australian made, um, but it's called Tensor Grip T65. It's awesome. In any case, let's uh, keep going. Well, ignore the carpet, but uh, I've installed these in here now and it's looking really good. That's a long way. You know, I've got the, uh, the headliner that's already in. I, I have to put this panel in. All right, well, I'm quite happy with that. It was quite a productive day. I managed to repair the panels and trim them. That got a big portion of my bits and pieces done, which is great. 
Uh, but I'm definitely out of time, so that must mean it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. Today, Japan is one of the world's largest car makers, but it started from humble beginnings. In 1902, Kumano Suki Uchiyama bought a petrol engine back from the United States and built Japan's first car in 1907. In 1904, Torao Yamaha produced the first Japanese bus, which was powered by a steam engine and could carry 10 people. In 1917, Mitsubishi Shipping Company produced Japan's first production car, which was the Model A. It was an entirely hand-built seven-seater sedan based on the Fiat Tipo 3. Problem was, it proved to be very expensive, especially when compared to its mass-produced European and American rivals. It was discontinued in 1921 after only 22 were built. All right, I'm really happy with how that uh, turned out. It's um, considering I started with these broken, horrible little panels and now I've, I've managed to fiberglass them, fix them and trim them all today. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm still not happy with that back panel. I just, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to paint it. I think it's just, just paint it black. It'll look like it's vinyl. It's got that vinyl finish. It's the way it was originally. I was looking for more excuses to do painting and sanding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I spent all that time today trimming it and yeah. Anyway, <laughs> as always. All right, we well, hope you're enjoying the show. And if you are, please like and subscribe. Um, there's merchandise available. You wouldn't want a Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff t-shirt, right? Yeah. We're <laughs> Especially with Christmas facts. coming up. Yeah, great um, stocking so, stuffers. <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and... Here. Obviously here. Every time. And we'll see you <laughs> See you guys. Torao Yamaha. Torao. I'm not sure how you said it. Torao. Torao. Tor no. Torao. Because it's like Torao. Torao. In 1917, Mitsubishi Shipping Company produced... Bleh. No, that's not right. It is right. Based on the fat fit. Done. <laughs>